Welcome to Rebel Headquarters. I'm Mark Thompson filling in for Jank. You know me from my podcast or you don't know me from my podcast, which is very likely that you don't know me from my podcast, which is called The Edge with Mark Thompson. But I hope we'll get to know each other that way as well. I have to say it because it's so true. It's an honor and a pleasure always to fill in for Jank here on Rebel Headquarters, primarily because I meet so many uh, people who are representing so many values that I agree with, and they're either in congressional races or races for public service of other sorts. Uh, we've introduced you to so many people, and today uh, you'll meet a filmmaker who is, again, a cutting edge and telling a story that has, I think, not been told. At least I had not heard it. Uh, please welcome our guest, Yale Strom. Uh, Yale, this movie, American Socialist, The Life and Times of Eugene Victor Debs, this guy, Eugene Victor Debs, is a guy who was outspoken, became a, uh, a firebrand of socialism, and actually ran for president. In a sense, he set the table that Bernie Sanders would, would then eat at many, many decades later. Uh, again, I didn't know about him. Is this a well-kept secret? Well, among labor organizers and union people, uh, for some not. I'm, as we say, as you mentioned, Bernie Sanders, uh, 16 million voters voted for Senator Sanders, and he inspired them. But who inspired Bernie Sanders? And it was uh, Eugene Victor Debs. In fact, it, when he was a mayor, he might even still have it uh, uh, on the Hill, behind his uh, seat was a portrait of Eugene Victor Debs. So he ran for president five times on the Socialist Party. He's a co-founder of the Socialist Party of America. And um, I, he didn't just talk the talk, he walked the walk. He, was, uh, he went to prison for the Pullman strike in 1894. And, and that's uh, when, when, he went to, when he went to prison. Well, first of all, even before we get mm -hmm. to prison, yeah. he's not a guy who started as like some uh, worker alongside migrants in the field and not he learned about socialism that way. He's a guy whose experience was actually pretty upper class. And then he came to realize that there was an, uh, an inherent unfairness. Yeah. Um, his parents were uh, both from the Alsace, Alsace re uh, region of France. Actually, not, not upper class, more middle to lower. He dropped out of school at age 14, was a, was a, uh, a paint scraper on the railroads. Okay, so, so you're right. That's not very upper class. Yeah, and, right. okay. and, uh, and they eventually founded the American Railroad Union, the first strongest, one of the strongest of the rail, of the unions for railroads. But you're right, it was when he, he didn't want to go on strike during the Pullman strike. He did, he knew it wasn't ready, but his, many of his followers went, went on strike and he said, I can't not support them. And he did, Grover Cleveland uh, said, if you, if any of the um, mail that's being carried on the Pullman cars is not allowed to cross state line, that is a federal offense. Well, of course, uh, the, the, By definition, the workers, it wasn't going to work it, out. It wasn't so. going to work out. So they uh, they gave him a sentence of six months. And while he was in prison, he begins reading uh, Karl Marx and Engels and and uh, and others. And you're right. And slowly, slowly, he starts to see. You know what? I think there's a different way, perhaps a better way, an, alt an alternative way of governing ourselves, certainly economically. And um, and and th and then by 1900. 1901, he forms the Socialist Party with Victor Berger and, and, and thus begins his road to where he is not only known in America, but all over the world. You know, those of you who are, are bona fide socialists are probably looking in and going, Mark, I can't believe you didn't know about this guy. Well, I'm telling you, I didn't, but I'm excited to know about him through your film, This American Socialist, The Life and Times of Eugene Victor Debs. And again, the film is, uh, just for a second, I want to spend a second on it. It's really, it puts together... In, a, in an interesting way with archival video and archival uh, photos and uh, newspaper articles at the time, uh, a real picture of life in America and how life in America went from being this agricultural right. kind of a society to an industrial society. Right. So all the issues then that Eugene Victor Debs was concerned with all of a sudden become very important. Right, and issues today, Mark, that we're dealing with in 2018. Right. So, you know, 100 years ago, Debs went to prison, June of 16, 20, uh, 1918, he was convicted of the Sedition Act. Well, Wilson said, if you tell the workers and others uh, who are eligible to be um, drafted into World War I that this is a bad war, we should not go enter World War I, well, they did. 
he gets a, a sentence of 10 years. Eventually, he was commuted at three. But um, again, he, he, he not just talked the talk, but he walked the walk. And those issues, women's rights, I mean, the, you know, not until 1920 did women get the vote. Uh, immigrants' rights, uh, the, the, the wage uh, disparity between the very wealthy and the average worker. Um, uh, and these are, these are things that, that continued, as you said. He's putting out a lot of fires at one time. By the way, you mentioned the World War I thing. Imagine going to jail, I mean, going to prison because you were against the war. Exactly. And that's, it, was, it was that simple. And here, and interestingly enough, Woodrow Wilson did not pardon him, the so-called Democrat, and it was Harding who ended up uh, pardoning uh, Debs. Um, so, yeah, so, that, so we, the, the film covers the, hist the historical... Um, a uh, row that uh, brings Debs to the forefront of of uh, many millions of people. He got a million votes while he ran. He's the only person ever to run for uh, the, uh, the presidency while in federal penitentiary. <laughs> I mean, consider that. That's that you'd think that madness, but it, but it really did happen. And this uh, brings us to another thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you mentioned it repeatedly in talking about Eugene Victor Debs. It comes across in the film, and that is, I guess he was a, he might have been the first one of these too, although Lincoln and, and through time there have been mm. a few. Mm. And I'm talking about uh, orators, speakers who communicate in just the right way. This was a man who could speak to the masses in a way that made them receptive to his message. It's something that we in the progressive movement could learn a lot from today. 100%. He, um, remember, it's, it's really before newsreel time, so he had to project his voice. And he never talked down to the people. He talked to them. Uh, you know, there's many photos of people who see the film or go online. They'll see him pointing his finger, gesticulating. Uh, he was a passionate orator and, and, and really, you know, the, the people believed it. Even uh, we have in the film people who said their first language is Polish or Yiddish or some other language who only understood maybe 30% of what he's saying, but they understood he is for me. He wants to make my life better. And um, today, I, someone just told me, we were talking, I was just in New York for screenings, and they said, you know where Debs would be? And I said, what do you think Debs would be? He'd be right now walking with the teachers who are on strike in Arizona. That's sure. what the kind of man, he'd be on the line. He wouldn't be talking from Washington about the no. He said, no. I'm spending every day and night until they get what they deserve. Yeah, you could see that this is a guy who really followed his convictions, you know? The sellout that we see, the political sellout that we see in Washington now, and we see it on both sides, Democrats and Republicans, uh, that is no part of Eugene Victor Debs. None he, whatsoever. Uh, to every cell in his body, he is a man of his conviction. You know, it's interesting, it, and maybe this is why I had a sense that he, uh, he was from money, uh, his personal story is a little more complicated because he did marry someone who was kind of uh, into she, the good life. Oh, yes, yeah, she did come from money, Catherine. <laughs> um, and, you know... Uh, and there was a separation from between them because from, she... Certainly from the very beginning, really. I mean, they, they had, a obviously, a mutual respect. They did have a love, but slowly they, as um, Nick Salvatore, one of the great uh, biographers uh, who wrote about Deb, says... Pretty much after they married, they were on two boulders that were drifting apart. And that was, you know, that's his personal life. They never had children. Um, she had a nephew from her side of the family that they did some raising for some years. And so uh, I even mentioned in the film, you know, he did have a, an affair with a woman for 10 years. They kept sort of on the down low. Um, why did I bring these up? Because to show him he's a human. He, right. he, he didn't walk on water. None of us walk on water. And um, so he had frailties like everybody else. But when it came to um, wanting something better for the workers, a fairer life, what's wrong with the word better or fairer, right? He, you know, you know why, does, why does greed have to be the end all and be all of capitalism? And, and also I, I wanna add is he was able to project it in an American way, in a way that some people may say, oh, he, he's gonna talk about it in a Germanic way or the Russian way or European. He put it in values, in Christian values. Right. He said, you know, it, you know, to be a true Christian, you know, it's an act of socialism. I mean, to worry about those who have less than you, et cetera, et cetera. And um, a lot of people might not realize some of his strongest support came from Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, 
Arkansas. Nebraska, places today we consider rather red. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, our view of socialism, uh, what it is, what it was, I, I don't know that we all have a clear picture. That's why the film is, is so powerful that way. And, and it's just a great story. You, you weave a great narrative. Now, where can people see this movie? Well, right now, it's, um, uh, it's a true indie. We don't have a lot of money behind it, but it's a very good film uh, narrated by Amy Madigan. So it's opening this week, May 4th, uh, at, in Los Angeles. Uh, it's gonna play in D.C., uh, May 22nd at Labor Fest, Cleveland Museum of Art, June um, uh, 12th through 15th, and my home city right now, San Diego, um, May 11th. But the thing is, a lot of people out there are gonna say, but yeah, when's it coming to us? July 4th, it will come to the nation, whether downloading iTunes or Amazon and DVD. So it will, will, will uh, we're gonna give the nation a present on July 4th. That, and, if so, and if you have uh, questions, again, you can probably just, put it into a general search and you'll get American Socialist, the, the life and times of Eugene Victor Debs. Right. But the uh, website we have here, and there it is in a- uh, Excellent. Easy to digest graphic, lemley.com slash films 43530. Uh, I'm so proud of the work you've done, Yale oh, Strong. It's a real pleasure to meet you. A real pleasure. Thank you for having me so much. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you.